Ezekiel chapter number 33. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, Jews, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, war, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, that's like a boundary line, state line, county line, and set him for their watchman. Somebody's going to watch out for the city. If when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Now this trumpet, blow the trumpet, it's like when I come from in Connecticut, we had nuclear air warnings, air, air uh, sirens. They blow those things to tell you that something's going on. You need to be aware. This is the equivalent in the, in the Bible. A guy stands on, on the tower, he looks out, for, and when trouble comes, he blows a trumpet. Certain tones of a trumpet has certain condemnation, certain uh, information. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, he hears a trumpet, but who cares? Ain't going to happen. If the sword come and take him away, the one that did not listen, did not take heed, his blood shall be upon his own head. He, should, he heard the sound of the trumpet, there was warning, and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh, he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. He that heard the trumpet and did something. What was supposed to be done. But. If the watchman see the sword come. And blow not the trumpet. All right, here comes, here comes an, an army force. They're coming to attack. And, and the watchtower. See, the guy in the watchtower sees it. And does nothing. Sort of like what they say about Pearl Harbor. They say that they knew the Japanese were coming or something was coming and nothing was done. That's what they say. And, and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person, any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. He still dies in his sin. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Not doing your job. What do you think God expects from an employee who's being hired by an employer to be paid by that employer? And you are caught. But what if the Lord came back at your job when you're at your job site and you're at the water cooler? You're kicking back and not doing what you're supposed to be doing. What if the Lord comes back and in your business practice you are presently deceiving somebody? Oh yeah, we want the Lord to come. We want the Lord to come, but do we realize that He can come at any moment? So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. That's Ezekiel's commission. He's a watchtower. I don't mean Jehovah Witness. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. How do you like that? You better tell those Jews, your people, what I said and give them a warning that I am warning you. Does that sound like a loving God? It is. God said, I'm going to warn them before judgment. It is your job, Ezekiel, to tell them about the judgment. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. How does God speak to the wicked? Through Ezekiel. He just said, Therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me when I say unto the wicked. That is inspiration. When God speaks to the wicked man, he speaks to a man or even a woman when they're witnessing. Now let's take this as witnessing today. You know, we're going to see some things here that are not the church age. God has told us things in the Bible. He has given us a, a warning to the wicked. 
if they die in their sins, something's going to happen. I don't want to talk about that something yet. Let's move on. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, you, you keep your mouth. I got my own way with it. I can't do nothing. I can't speak. Oh. That wicked man should die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. 1 Kings 20, 35 to 43. That guy has a reference here. Nevertheless, notice how God always brings the negative out first. You want the good news or the bad news? God always usually gives the bad news first, then the good news. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Okay, why do you street preach? Why do you go bother those people at the farmer's market? Because I am warning them of God that something's going to happen in their lives and they need to do something. Now, Mr. Mrs. Christian, I am looking at you in the eye. You're not preach hell. You're too loud. It don't work. And every other excuse you give. What are you doing? It says, and I read again. Thou shalt hear the word at my mouth. And warn them. What are you supposed to warn them of? The love of God. That's no warning. That happened in Calvary. Don't say hell. What are you to warn them then from? Christian. I don't think you should say hell. Turn people off. What am I supposed to warn them from? God will say to the wicked sinner, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Isn't that in this chapter? I never knew you. I am to warn the wicked about God casting judgment upon them and putting them into the lake of fire that burneth for eternity. Let's read on. When I say unto the wicked, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and I go on and preach for a half hour, 45 minutes. O wicked man, thou shalt die. Don't I talk about dying? I put the videos up. Don't I tell them that there's one thing for sure. If it's not taxes, it's death. Medical bills. If thou dost not Speak to warn the wicked from his way. What is his way? Oh, look at a girl with a miniskirt. No. Oh, look at the two sodomites. No. Guy smoking a marble. No, that's not their way. They are going on the road of hell. That is why I read over and over John chapter 3 when I preach on the street. Because John chapter 3 tells them, you're already in condemnation. You're not going to be condemned. You're condemned already. You need the way, the truth, and the life. You need access to the Father, and there's only one way to get to the access to the Father. They don't listen. You don't have crowds, okay? If thou does not speak to warn, warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I requite at thy hand. If you don't do anything to the wicked to, to turn them to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to find yourself with blood on your fingers at the great white throne judgment. Now, you're not going to be cast in hell for all those people that God put in your life. You're going to be held accountable to them. Why you kept your mouth short? Why you wouldn't speak hell? Now let's read on. Nevertheless, if thou big mouth go on the street and preach hell, warn the wicked of his way to turn from it. Don't I preach repentance? Don't I teach sins? Don't I preach 
Jesus Christ is the way, you don't have big masses of people. You don't have people following you. You are turning them away. Really? Really? If he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. God already told me many are going to go to Broadway. Many are not going to listen to you. So when you come up to me and say, you're turning people away, they're not going to follow that. You are completely, if you know it or not, if you're a Bible believer or not, you've already confirmed what the Bible says. I am without judgment when it comes to lost man's soul if I tell them. You're so loud. Good. I ought to be as loud as I can be loud. Do you realize that I may be aiming at uh, the farmer's market and I may be preaching to somebody behind me at the library. I may be preaching to a guy fishing at the, the, the river there. I may be preaching to someone sitting at the picnic table. I don't know what God's doing with my voice. You better not mock my voice because God has given me a loud voice to speak that he can use at his will. Then I give it to him. I may be aiming my, my preaching at, at the farmer's market and God may be saying, you idiot, i got to go over there at the, at the gazebo. I don't know. But I know one thing. If I preach the truth, if I preach hell, if I preach sins, and I preach Jesus, and I preach belief, and I, pre and I preach repentance, I've done what God's told me to do. I'm a watchman. Therefore, O son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, Jewish, Jewish, get that, underline it, mark it, for the rest of these passages. Israel. Thus he speaks, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, we pine away in them. How shall we then live? That's a good question, Israel. I would love to have somebody come up and say that to me and open up the gospel and open up the New Testament. We're in the Old Testament now. Reality. Say unto them, If I live, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way, turn from his way. What way is that? The way of hell. The way of judgment. That is repentance right there. Turning. Repentance is, a, is a, the, the definition of Turn ye from his way. That's repentance. You know how you know somebody really got saved? It's when they repented and they turned from their way. Now they may the sins may drop off later. But did they become a new creature? And live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. Their sins. For why will you die, O house of Israel? And you can apply that to a lost man today. God is not willing to throw you in hell. God is long-suffering. For God so loved the world that he gave. God does not want to put you in hell. 1 Corinthians 1, 18-25 and Revelation 4, 11. Therefore thou, son of man, say unto the children of thy people, Jews, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Uh-oh. You can be righteous in Old Testament and die in your transgression and still be lost. Thank God for grace and mercy in this side of Calvary. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in a day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. And you died in sin in the Old Testament. That was it. Kapoor. You know, if you if you slept with a man's wife, that, that was it. I don't care if you lived 49 million years and did everything right like you're supposed to. Besides David, you died and went to hell. I don't care if you were 7 years old. You murdered somebody. You could live 90 years twice over and do everything you're supposed to. You died and went to hell. There was no payment in the Old Testament for murder, and there was no payment for adultery. Thank God for Jesus Christ on this side of Calvary. Because a lot of people want to put you back under the law. 
That's what we read in First Timothy. There are people, they want to be teachers of the law, really. When I say unto the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts in his own righteousness and commit an iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he has committed, he shall die for it. Absolutely everything you've done right will be wiped away. At the judgment seat of Christ for a Christian, it's burnt away. But we still go to heaven. We still go to New Jerusalem. Not the Jew in the Old Testament. Again, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die. If he turn from his sin, repentance. Now here's the trouble. And do that which is lawful and right. That's works. That defies the gospel. That defies New Testament. Not of works, at least any man boasts. As far as a Christian today, if he turn from his sin, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Old Testament saint, and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, works. Give again that he had robbed, works. You know what Paul says about someone who stole? Let him that st steal, steal no more and go get a job to help others. It would be right if you rob somebody to pay them back. But Paul said, change your profession, go get another job, and go help others. Doesn't tell them to repay. You know what the law said? Was it anything you stole? Five, five sheep from one sheep, something like that? You realize how impossible that is? If you got to steal for food, you stole the sheep to feed your family lamb chops, how are you supposed to pay five sheep if you ain't got one sheep? Walk in the statutes of life. That's the law. Works. Without committing iniquity. Really? Have you tried that one? Have you tried that one going down the road of the billboards in America? You can't even go through a grocery store with clean eyes. He shall surely live. He shall not die. All by work. Second Chronicles 33, 1-20. None of his sins that he has committed shall be mentioned unto him. That would be good. That's great. He has done that which is lawful and right. Works. He shall surely live. We got 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is, he is righteous and just to forgive us our sins. The Old Testament, you have to go to the temple. You had to do right. Yet the children of thy people say, the Jews, that's what the Jews are saying, the way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall even die thereby. He quits doing the law. He quits doing the works. Like Saul. Saul stopped. But if the wicked man, if the wicked turn from his wickedness, repentance, and do that which is lawful and right again works, he shall live thereby. Yet ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, I will judge you every one after his way. What's wrong with God's way? If a man is right and turns and does wrong, he's going to be judged. Wrong. Iniquity. If a man's done right and got right, what's wrong with that? Israel wanted to do wrong and they wanted God to bless it. They want to call evil good and good evil, and that's the state of America today. You know how I know? Because a bunch of people running around this country and pray saying God loves sodomites. And he's going to bless us and we're going to be in heaven. When it's a sin. And woe we'll be the people who don't want to make a cake for us. They're wicked. They're going to burn in the lowest hell for not making us a cake. Sound like America? That's exactly what the Jews were doing. Remember we've been told through Jeremiah and Ezekiel they're killing people. And then they're turning around God bless us. They gave Jesus Christ over to Pilate. 
to be crucified, right? And they're like, oh, we can't defile ourselves with a Passover lamb. You get that? We're going we're gonna to give Jesus Christ over to be slain by the Roman government, but we're going to go honor God, and God's going to honor us on the Passover. What do you mean Peter gets to go to heaven over us? That loud mouth, big mouth over us, we're holy. And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity. All right, here's a date. 24, 26, and 27 is now fulfilled. In the tenth month, on the fifth day of the month, that one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came unto me, saying, The city is smitten. Jerusalem. And I don't know what the date I forget to check if this is the second one or the third one. God be at least. Now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening. Afore he that escaped came, escaped came, he had opened my mouth. So before this guy came and told Ezekiel what happened, God opened Ezekiel's mouth. Remember, he can only speak when God told him to speak. He was dumb. Remember we read that? All the way up to this chapter, Ezekiel's been dumb to speak by himself. Only when God. That's why you kept reading. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying. Other than that, he was dumb. I wish God would give me a mouth like that sometimes. Only speak when he wanted me to speak. That would give me a lot of trouble. Now, when I speak what I want to speak, that gets me in a lot of trouble. That's not righteous trouble. When I open up my mouth and get myself in trouble, that's not persecution of people because of, because of God. It's persecution of my stupidity in my mouth. But if God were to open my mouth and put in my mouth what's to be spoken and after that to be shut, I'd be in trouble because the world would hate me if I spoke the truth all the time. Churches and preachers would hate me if God would use my mouth like this. How many priests are against Ezekiel? You know, I don't read about one friend that hangs out with Ezekiel. Jeremiah, at least he had the Ethiopian. Had opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning, and my mouth was open, and I was no more dumb. Now you go back to where I don't know what chapter is, but this is how long. Ezekiel could only open his mouth when God told him to, and that was it. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel, it's wasted. Probably the third captivity. The land is wasted. Speak and say, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land. But we are many. The land is given for our hand. You know, Abraham was just one guy. Guys, look what God did. But look at all those Jews. That's our land. They're, they're counting the fact is on who they are. But who they are has escaped what, what they were to be. Wherefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Ye eat with the blood. That violation of the law. And lift up your eyes toward your idols. Violation of the law. And shed blood. Violation of the law. And shall ye possess the land with all your sins? You think you're going to wear a crown in heaven when you're still sinning? Willingly, knowingly, and what the Bible tells you? You're a fool. God is not, not capable and will not reward iniquity, but for the Christian, ashes. Ye stand upon your sword. Ouch. I don't think that I mean literally, but ye work abomination, and ye defile every one of his neighbors. Look at these sins. And shall ye possess the land? Ye eat with the blood, state tartar. Let's look at America. Lift up your, uh, your eyes toward the idols, the Oscars, the Emmys, American Idol, and shed blood. There's murder throughout this nation. Ye shall we possess the land? Ye stand upon your sword. Ye work abomination. There are uh, occupations. There are careers out there in America that's an abomination to God. Ye devour everyone's neighbor's wife. Look on television. There are two people in bed that are not husband and wife. There are two people on the screen hugging and kissing each other. They are not husband and wife. 
and shall ye possess the land. We're talking to Jews. You know what God just told these Jews through Ezekiel? I kicked your butt out of the land because you're a sinner. Jerusalem is wave lace, wasted because of your sins. What do you think God's going to do to America because of her sins? If God lets America go and blesses her, he'll have to apologize to every single Jew in Jeremiah and Ezekiel's time. And all the Egyptians. And all the Tyrians or Tyrus. And all the Syrians. And all the Ninevites. And the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Capernaum. All the cities that God warned them and, just, and cast judgment upon. If God blesses America, he would have to repent. He's not going to, because he's done right. Say thou thus unto them, thus saith the Lord God, as I live, oath of God. Surely they that are in the waste, I don't know how you say that word, waste. I know waste, but waste. Shall fall by the sword. Everyone that's in Jerusalem right now, after this fall, if they're still there, they're going to die by the sword. Maybe Nebuchadnezzar is going to come back. Maybe this is the second time. And him that's in the open field will I give to the beast to be devoured. <laughs> I escaped the army. I'm in my fallout. Uh, a bear. <laughs> you know a lot of people are seeing bears? A lot of people are seeing wolves in America? A lot of animals are going crazy? And they... That be in the forts, that's the that's stronghold, and in the caves, stronghold, bomb shelter, shall die of the pestilence. A disease will get you. Cave will probably be mold. The fort, I think you can pass gangrene. For I will lay the land most desolate. I think this is a second captivity. I think God ain't, I could be wrong. I don't think God's done with Jerusalem yet. I think there's one more chance. Most desolate meaning, I mean, he goes in there and tears everything down by Nebuchadnezzar. And the pomp of her strength shall cease. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that none shall pass through. Then shall thou know I am the Lord. It's not the time to know the Lord. We've gone all that over and over and over. When I have laid the land most desolate. Probably not the third time. Probably not the time of uh, Jeremiah's lamentation. Because all their abominations. Because of your sin. Which they have committed. Go through the Bible sometime and look up the word abomination. Every form thereof. Three of them are of Egypt. But read the rest of them and match it with the sins of America and see where it stands. Paragraph. Here's the attitude of the people. Of the people, for the people, by the people. Also, the house of the man. Now, now God's talking. Now, God is, okay, Ezekiel, I want you to say all you want to say right now that I've told you. All right, come here, Ezekiel. Come sit down with God, and I want to have a little talk with you. Oh, okay, God. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people, the Jews, still are talking against thee, the preacher. Imagine what people are saying after we leave the farmer's market. By the walls and the doors of the houses. You know where people talk about the preacher? When they get home, between the walls and behind the doors. And speak one to another. Everyone to his brother. Family. <laughs> kinship. Come, I pray you. And hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Come on, let's go hear what the preacher has to say. You think everyone that goes to church to hear what the preacher says? You think they got a good testimonial heart? You think they're really searching for God? You think everybody in church does right? Let's read on. And they come unto thee, preacher, as the people cometh. Everyone gather together, they sit in their pews, and they sit before thee in the pews as my people. I'm a Christian. We're all Christians. 
We get people come up to us, we're preaching the word of God. Well, I'm a Christian. I want to do that. Then you turn the people away. I'm saved. Really? And, and they hear thy words. There are people in a church who hears the preacher and claim to be God's people. Notice the word says, as my people. It doesn't say before they are my people. As. I like to put an extra S in there, but I can't. They're not God's people, but they pretend to be. And yet they are the people of God. They are the Jews. But they become non, not God's people. <laughs> I like that one. His people, he said, they come as my people, and they're not. So you can be a Jew and not be God's people. And they hear thy words. James 1.22, but they will not do them. Our preacher gets up in the pulpit. He tells you, you know, about sin, get rid of it, about repentance. He tells you about going out trying to tell people about Jesus Christ. If you can make the parade, you can do it. I mean, you're health wise. You can't do it health wise. You know, you pray. You do what you're supposed to do. And they walk out of the church service and they don't do nothing for God the next Sunday morning. And they go home and talk about the preacher. And do nothing. For with their mouth they show much love. I love Jesus. You gotta be careful, everyone that goes up. I love Jesus. You know what? I don't need to say I love Jesus, people. My life shows it. You know, you don't believe it. But their heart goes after their. Oh, here's another sin: covetousness. Read the parable of the of the, uh, the sower. Mark four, where the thorns and the thistles. You know what happens to these people later on, according to Mark 4? They go bye-bye. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice. Oh, the daffodils are in the field today as God loves us. Skipping through the valleys to get to you as the footprints upon the sand. And Lord, I saw only two sets of footprints. I don't understand this. It is where I carried you. Yeah. I'm glad people don't like my voice downtown. Because it says here, if I have a pleasant voice, <laughs> the people will love me. You may even put a plaque on your church wall that we are founded by the community. Oh. Marvel not, the world hates you. All they that live Christ and live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution and can play well with an instrument. For they hear thy words. There are people don't listen, many people hear my loud mouth voice, but they do them not. Remember what we read about the the watchman? They hear you. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. They hear you. It's not up to me to get them saved. It's up to them and God. As long as they hear me. So when I go downtown and preach as loud as I can preach, that is what God has called me to do. Some people think I'm angry. I'm not. I, I stand on the phone. I wasn't angry. I just got a loud voice. And it gets louder and louder. Now, you should have heard me yell at my neighbors last night about their dog barking. I had every dog in the neighborhood barking after that. That's angry. But I have told them. And what's the problem? What is the problem with street preaching? Is there a problem? Yes, there is. What is the problem? They do them not. They don't do what I tell them to do. That's the problem with street preaching.
So you know what the problem with street preaching lies? It lies with the wicked. I've done what God told me to do. That is my calling. I've got the voice for it. You know what you need to pray for in street ministries anywhere in this country, anywhere in this world, and people go knocking on the doors? I'm not good for knocking on doors. But people go knock. You know what you need to do? You need to pray for the wicked people that they will do what's being told to them to be done. That's what needs to be prayed for. Now, ready. Now, verse 33 can be applied to City Island, Daytona Beach, Florida, 2015. I think that's when we started this. And a lot of people are going to be called to question by God. By verse 33. And when this cometh to pass, the city is going to be destroyed. That's what we're talking about in the content. And lo, it will come. Going to be destroyed. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. When I preach about hell, Mr. Christian, hell fire, Mrs. Christian, when these people reject what God said to do, and I preach the Bible, not myself, as God tells them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, they're going to know that that loudmouth man really loves them, really is doing what the Bible tells them to do, and they're going to know I spoke the truth. And they're going to turn to you at the great white throne judgment and say, why didn't you tell me? Now, what is it? The rich man in hell, that, I always forget. Luke 15, is that? Luke 15? Let me show you something. I, if I, can, I can never get where that, is, that one is. Luke, the chapters get me confused. Luke, I think it's 15. 11 or 15? 16. Okay. I'm in John. Watch this. You want to have fun? You don't want to witness the people? You don't think that, you know, the conduct will do well? Luke 16. A man is in hell. Okay? In 16, verse number 28. For I have five brethren. This guy has already died. He's already in hell. That he may testify unto them. Least they also come into this place of torment. There are people in hell that are telling you Christians. Get out there and tell my family. Did you know that? You know a man that, that Jesus Christ tells, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, depart from me, I never knew you. You know he may turn to that street preacher, that door knocker, and say, thank you for telling him. Would that be a testimony? Would that be a testimony of not having blood in your fingers when somebody's about to be judged in the lake of fire, turn to you and say, thank you, you tried. And then turn to his family and say, you jackass. Why didn't you listen to him? And then you get that Christian in the workplace who goes with the world. Why didn't you tell me? And there's the blood dripping. You know what happens when Cornelius got saved? His entire family got saved. You know what happened when that Philippian jailer got saved? He went home and his entire family and his recorded to the prisoners were baptized. Why is there no revival in America today? You can't preach hell. And that's coming out of Christian's lips. Don't tell me I know. Everyone that's come up to me and say, you mentioned hell, has, has presented himself to be a Christian. Everybody else says I'm a loud mouth and judgmental. What am I supposed to warn them about? 